the red switch in the front is going to be your burner control. Yeah, let me ask you such a question. Yeah. What's this? That's it. Okay, the, the black tank is your gasoline tank. Should be red in my opinion. I don't know why they went black, but they did. The white tank is an antifreeze tank or winterizing tank. If you ever go up north with a job, Pennsylvania, New York, anywhere. It allows the antifreeze to get in the tank, into the pump and winterize it. 
It can be used as a chemical injector, but it's going to inject the, uh, the chemical into the pump, and then when you shut the gun off, it's going to bypass into your tank. So that's the only the problem. But we'd rather have the bypass than the chemical injector. <coughs> um, uh, we'll take any standard. It just winterizes the pump. <laughs> 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 The unit has got a 3,000 watt onboard generator. Let's say you did need light or something at night. You just plug <coughs> right behind the panel here, right behind the white switch. You have two plugs. Normally don't use more than a thousand watts of power. So if you do need light, I would get some LED low amp, you know, lights on here. You can go 110. Uh, you can run 12 volt also because the machine is an, you know, it's not like an economy unit. Uh, it actually has it, the generator here actually runs a 120 volt burner system, which is the best you can buy. Plus, being oversized, uh, what they did is they made these oversized recently go 3,000 watts because they actually have mobile wastewater recovery and filtration systems so you can recycle and reuse the water. And they want to be able to plug that into this. Matter of fact, after they upgraded the generator, we really eliminated a lot more of the uh, burner trouble. Because most of the burn trouble is lack of voltage issues. And that's why you also want to make sure that uh, if you've got no heat or if it's smoking the burner, you want to check your belt. There's a single belt back here for the generator. And there are three belts for the pump. Uh, you have to have the proper voltage coming off the unit in order to have the proper amount of heat and burner running the right RPM. And you can get a normal voltmeter, make sure everything's up to enough. Standard engine RPM also is 3450 under no load. It should not go below 3250 under load. That that I always say I ask guys in both, you know, we just had a guy come down from uh, Lake Weld. We have three mechanics go to shops and working on things. He's really smoking where the fire department's coming out, thinking it's a fire. And it's like, dude, bring it down. I can just make the trip. And he came down, and then the first thing we did is check the engine RPM, found out he had a blown head gas yet. But at three other shops, they rewrapped the coil, they did like four and a buck for the work. They did everything but what was the simplest thing to look for. Mm -hmm. So engine RPM is first, mm -hmm. voltage is second, then start messing with the rest. And you can call us and we're, 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 we've got hundreds and hundreds of these on the market out there right now. Uh, so typically, that's some of the issue if you see it smoking or acting up or just in general. Um, it does have a thermal relief valve. Really, you can just plug that in general. We leave them on just because it's another redundant safety device, but they act kind of funky on a suction system. They tend to leak every balloon boom because it's more for pressure, keeping the pressure on it. And suction, it'll actually have a little valve in there that will wear. So, uh, yeah, that, this particular one, it, it, that one you can plug off if you have to. Um, the engine also has a charging system, so it's going to automatically charge the battery and maintain the battery. That's another issue if you ever have dead battery after dead battery, check your voltage and charging system off of that. You want so a 13.75 pump. It constantly charges the battery. And you got 13.75 volts by average. Uh, main thing on that is if you do have a chemical pump here that'll run off <coughs> in the front, if you were to just spray, spray, spray for an hour and all of a sudden you have a dead battery, then you know it's just an issue with. Uh, the fact you probably should have started the engine and run it. So you could pre-treat for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes and then have to run the engine. Just once you get to a point, you want to make sure you just start the engine anyway. So I got the 30 minutes left trying to just like recharge the battery. Right. And that's it. Five right. minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just see what you need. I mean, if it's more, it's more. Um, for, for a shorter period of time, but you've got that. Um, this is your pressure regulator. The green spring on load. I already marked off with some white food just to keep adjusting it. A lot of times if you don't have the right pressure, it could be a worn out spray tip, the wrong tip altogether. We gave you an assortment of tip and some low pressure tips. So, uh, you know, it's just a matter of making sure the tips match. This machine tends to fall into a number nine. It's nine gallon a minute, so at full power, you want a number nine nozzle. So uh, all the spray tips either go 15 
their degree, 15 degree, 25 and 40, they're normally color coded. Red is zero. You could literally put a hole through someone or into somebody very quickly. Yellow caution because it's 15 degree, it's more of a cutting edge, you know. Uh, the wider the fan, the less impact. And uh, the 40 the wash down, but most of the time the white tip is going to be your general purpose tip for doing all your building washes, your painting. This machine has so much power that that typical rinse tip actually has a lot of power to pressure clean. So you'll see, you could do that. And then I've got some other tips that I demoed with Ken where you can, if you're doing vinyl siding or something large, it'll give you like a four foot fan to be able to pressure clean. I mean, it's none of this little two, four, you know, four inches at a time trying to clean a building. It, it, Think a monster. It's all stainless steel frame and construction. Try not to get chlorine or acid or anything on there. To keep it pristine like that, I mean, you want to keep the chemicals off the unit. It's resistant to it, but it's a one and only way, you know, for you to find problems. Let's see what else is on it. Yeah, but, uh, pressure relief valve, so more safety redundant instant off the pump side. This is the pressure relief valve for the pump pressure. See the 4,500, yeah, 4,500 PSI <coughs> on these. There's an additional one on the back of the coil. So this is kind of your first step, maybe before a steam situation. Here's one right back here. Over a period of time, there's an Allen wrench in there that you can have a fine adjustment. If it just pops off and your pressure flow seems to be okay, but your bypass may be a lot high, um, you may be able to adjust that, and maybe in a year it might lose a little spring tension and may take a half a turn, uh, but that's another item you want to have a, in the toolbox. You don't want to have a spare one of those, but the other two. So when you see any leaks or blowouts, I mean, it, you know, you can point that out. This is pressure, that steam, just to give you an idea. This is your diesel fuel tank. The diesel is for the burner system, not the engine. So you've got regular gasoline in the black tank over there for the engine, and then you've got diesel for the burner. And the white tank, is, like I said, it's an antifreeze tank, is really not applicable in this situation. Let me see what else we got here. How long will you go on the tank of gas in approximately? You should go as close to a day out of the, uh, out of the gas. The diesel will probably a day and a half. So they used to have 18 gallon tanks before this, but then the EPA changed and they had to add all these carb canisters and all this other crap, so they went down to an eight gallon that would be easier to certify. Uh, kind of wish we had the 18, and, and there is actually a kit that you can get that they offer the 18 gallon thing, you know, should we have a larger capacity. The only reason they don't do it because they run into trouble on their own in California. It could be a $50,000 fine. How long would you say that gas tank is? What I would, uh, what I would say, if you have a long commercial day, I would say you're probably going to go through that tank and just have a spare five gallon gas can handy. Uh, you may not need all of it, but it is. It, what happens, it doesn't drain all the way to the bottom, so you're going to only get like five and a half, six gallons for seven gallons, maybe seven gallons out of it. But, uh, hey, Dan, mm -hmm. uh, maybe you can discuss the throttle. Oh, the yeah, that's a good point. The throttle's on here, but it doesn't do anything. It's already, the linkage is disconnected. I've had somebody take it to a repair shop, put a new linkage, you don't do that. This is a fixed RPM, so it's gonna stay at high RPM when you start it, full speed. And uh, it's designed to do that because whenever you run a generator, the voltage is, is controlled by the RPM of the engine, and it gives you the exact you know 120 volts you need. So don't worry about the bottom one. I don't know why they just don't cut it off or do something with it. Uh, you do have your choke at the top here, and that you do need to do. Even when it's high, you might have to just choke it in for a split second and then shut it off. And when I crank the engine over, I normally will crank the engine and I pump the choke. If we're in Florida, it's not that needed all the time, and that way you're not over choking it. Your tip stick is here. You definitely want to always check your oil, make sure it's at the top hash mark. The pump oil on this is real easy because you've got a sight glass, and the sight glass here is right there. So when it's level, it should be right. You always want to have an air bubble above it, and this depends on the level of the trailer. Um, that's perfectly fine, but it shouldn't go below the red dot. You 
you got an hour meter, everything will have to be. Normally there's something to do for service every 50 hours. So if it's in the field and it's got 50 hours, you know, let, them, let them know so we, you know, the maintenance on there. He mentioned 30 hours, it's even better, so whatever it takes. Uh, you have the engine fuel filter here. You got a Raycor style diesel fuel filter with a water separator. So if you ever see any water in the bottom of this, you can open this up a little bit and let it drain out. But the Raycor fuel filter, just like an oil filter, but you just are replacing the center element itself. You got dual outlets on the burner. Since this is a dual operator machine, it does run a million times better at full flow. Uh, it's three times faster than one guy at four and a half gallons a minute. So like two guys separately are not faster than one guy by themselves, especially if you're surface cleaning, roof cleaning, wall. The advantage of the dual operator in a huge way is if you're doing chewing gum remover on typical 7-Eleven, Cumberland Farm, where you literally got hundreds of pieces of gum or school district, then just pop the two guys out, put two yellow tips in. This doesn't even need a turbo nozzle for that. It's just yellow tip and it'll have enough heat and steam. All you got to do is give it about two, three seconds over the gum and it'll vanish. You might have a gum ring and there is a uh, you could use like a wet fan blaster with a baking soda, like a soda blasting to get rid of the gum ring. So if somebody really, really wants the first time pristine job, then you just upcharge and get, you know, whip out the soda blaster or, or the sand blaster kit. Um, this is your low water kill switch here. This actually is equipped with a low water kill switch in the tank. Now the low water kill switch, what it's going to do is actually, we run that from there over to this, this wiring harness right here. It's actually pink wire. It's kind of weird. I don't know why we got pink wire at the shop, but <laughs> it's just pink. It's, well, it's obvious and you know where to look for it. Um, what that does is that's going into the, the carburetor with the fuel solenoid valve. And what you're going to do is if it doesn't start right away and you know you've got fuel, you got oil, and you got water, it could be a bad switch. And if it is, it's hard to hear, but you can hear a little click. Now there's a little click here, but it's got to be the one up here. That's your fuel solenoid. All of a sudden, if you do this and it gets nothing, it could be a bad kill switch. At that point, then everything else has been eliminated. Then you can open up the sheet to this here, and you should find uh, somewhere in line here will be a uh, male female connector. And you should be yeah, down at the bottom here. What you can do is just tie those two wires together or connect the two wires together that are hanging from the engine. What we did is we cut the solenoid wire and connected it to the kill switch. So this right here is where you would be this, this pink assembly. And, and that'll get you back up and running. Just keep tabs on the water after that. And this can go bad. So this is one thing where, you know, um, Another one, you know, should have a spare one also, though they're not that expensive. But it's good to have. It keeps that operator air. Everybody runs out of water. They always want to wait till the last second, especially if you got a refill somewhere. This way, if you're doing street sidewalks and a bunch of other things, you've got that as a backup system on that. This valve here is for your chemical or, or antifreeze tank. Basically, leave it alone. If you open this up, and there's nothing in the tank, what's going to happen is it's going to suck air, it's going to sputter, and it's going to cavitate the pump and actually can break that pump in half just from cavitation. If it, so that's any year in the system, system, system is catastrophic. Yeah, that's from the white tank. We used to be a chemical injector only, and we used to yank it off there completely and just wouldn't even know it was ever on the machine. But because it is, you know, had to purpose in case it does go up more. just leave it full of water or something? Yeah, I would do that. I would fill it with water in just in case. So the, the All right. chemical. So this, this one feeds into here. Now the chemical system has the drain on this side. There's a three-way valve on this side over here. Now the three-way valve allows you to run there's a yellow arrow here. It's harder to see, but you see the arrow. Right now it's pointing to the tank, that's where the soap is going to come from, that tank. So when you run the pump, it shut off because it's on-demand pump, so it will not run, run, run all day until your battery. 
when you turn open the valve in the back of the unit here, there Either the inlet filter going to the ocean okay. itself. And this you can pivot if you need it to come out. You know, once you have a sign here or whatever you do, you know, you can either come off the back or come through this hole here. If you need to go the other way. But we, you know, got a little bit of uh, play on that. You can also probably have an adapter made for a garden hub 